So let's start with the good stuff, active riders, back to pre-pandemic levels. Tell us the trends that are driving this and how well you see it keeping up in a downturn. Well, the big meta trend that we're seeing now is that the U.S. consumer, consumer in general, and especially the U.S. consumer, is still spending. But you're seeing a shift of that spend from spend on retail goods uh, during the pandemic, people were at home, et cetera, back to services. Travel sector is incredibly strong. Restaurant, hospitality sector is strong. People are going back to work. And all of that is benefiting the Uber business. Uh, our mobility business is incredibly strong. Delivery is proving to be a really sticky habit. All of that translates into gross bookings of $29 billion, up 32% on a year-on-year -on -year basis. And then, of course, adjusted EBITDA um, coming in super, super strong uh, in terms of you know over 500 million adjusted EBITDA in the quarter. And then what we indicated for next quarter is adjusted EBITDA range of 600 to 630 million. So even more strength ahead for us. Still, riders aren't taking as many rides as they used to. What else needs to happen before Uber sees a full recovery? Or do you ever get back to those numbers? I think we will absolutely get back to those numbers and hopefully beyond. And you're seeing signs of that, which is trips per monthly active. Pre-pandemic, we're about 5.7 uh, trips uh, per monthly active. Uh, they were stuck at about five trips per monthly active. And you've seen that come up to 5.3 now. And it's absolutely headed in the right direction as the world opens up, as you know, again, people go out to restaurants, et cetera. What we also have is a power of the platform. In that pre-pandemic, we were essentially a rides-only business. Now, our rides and our eats business are of equal size. And essentially, we are moving our riders, upselling them Uber Eats, and we're upselling our eaters to grocery and then back to rides as well with the Uber One membership program, which now has launched in eight markets. So we're confident that we can drive higher frequency, higher engagement with our platform, just because of the breadth of use cases that we have now. Let's talk about delivery, demand holding up. As you said, it's a very sticky habit, profit looking really good, but we're not seeing notable growth. Is this an area where you're seeing the impact of inflation set in, where some customers might be saying, you know, maybe I'm gonna order out one less time this week or this month, just to be more conservative? Well, we're definitely seeing the impact of comps, remember? So last year, we weren't fully opened up or recovered. So when you look at our delivery growth, X foreign exchange, because foreign exchange has hurt us, it's hurt Google, it's hurt basically any global company out there. Our growth on the delivery side actually accelerated from 12% to 13% this last quarter. We think that Q4 will be similar or slightly higher in terms of year over year X FX growth. And what we're seeing there is that our audience of delivery continues to grow. Basket sizes are higher. Some of that is inflationary as well. As well. And when we look at the frequency of ordering of users, that's stable. So users are continuing to use our delivery uh, uh, product as they have before. And really, we're comping against pandemic comps, and we're also uh, uh, being hurt by foreign exchange. But the underlying growth of the business is healthy, and we think it's going to keep healthy for some period of time. Now, I've been traveling a lot lately, and yes, my rides per month are going up, but prices are still <laughs> elevated. When are prices going to fully come back down? Will they ever really come back down to where they were? Well, I do think that inflation has affected um, everybody and I think has re-baselined to some extent prices. Uh, so I don't think that prices are going to go down to pre-pandemic levels, uh, but we have seen pricing eased. For example, Q3 pricing versus Q2 pricing, surge levels came down. Our average ETAs in terms of, you know, when you push a button, when is when do you uh, get your car? That's improved as well. Service quality levels have improved. So we're hoping that pricing continues to ease going to Q4 on, on next year. But I do think that this is a new baseline. And, you know, our consumers, our riders, our eaters, they're willing to pay, as you can see from the growth rates that we've seen, as it relates to both audience up 14%, uh, trips up 19%, and then obviously gross bookings, which are dollars uh, in the bank, so to speak, up 32%.
driver supply is materially improving. What's what's happening with incentives? Are we going to see you pull back on incentives? Will they go away completely? Will you keep some around? Well, I think incent we are going to keep incentives around, but driver supply is improving because we've made real investments in the driver experience. We have uh, radically improved our onboarding process so it's faster, so a higher percentage of drivers who've shown interest in driving for Uber actually make that first trip. We're making that onboard flow faster, easier, customer service available to help you in case you're having any issues with documents, uh, et cetera. Um, driver earnings levels are quite robust. Uh, drivers in the US, for example, on average, make $36 uh, per hour engaged on the platform. Those are very robust earnings level, especially uh, with an activity that's completely flexible. You can drive when you want, where you want uh, as well. And then we're also innovating for drivers. Drivers uh, previously, they couldn't, for example, see the upfront price or the destination that they were headed at. That was one of the most requested features. And we shipped that feature for our drivers uh, this last quarter so that they can see the upfront destination, they can see the upfront price, and they can pick and choose what's the trip that's right for them. Uh, and if a trip is not right for them, they can move on to the next trip as well. All of that is adding to more drivers coming onto the platform. But not only are they coming onto the platform, churn rates are down almost 20% on a year on year basis, and they're more engaged with us. Uh, the uh, supply hours per driver are up 16% on a year-on-year -year basis. If churn is down and engagement is up, it tells you that we're doing something right. It is earnings levels that are really good, but we're very, very much focused on improving the driver experience on Uber and to be the platform for earners to come and earn flexibly and safely. Okay. want to ask your thoughts on Prop 30. Lift a big backer of it. Gavin Newsom, the governor, wants it to fail. The revenue from this generated uh, taxing wealthy people would go to EV charging infrastructure, subsidies to buy electric cars, which it seems that Uber has a vested interest in. Why haven't you taken a strong stance on Prop 30 yet? I saw you ran into Governor uh, Newsom on Twitter. Have you talked to him about this? Yeah, I have talked to him about this. And, and it's our feeling that California is making very substan substantial investments in terms of incentivizing EV ownership, in terms of charging infrastructure, and it's definitely showing up in our business. As you know, we've made very significant investments in moving more of our fleet over to EVs. Uh, we have a great uh, partnership with Hertz, for example, to get more Teslas onto the Uber fleet. And California is leading the pack in terms of miles or the percentage of our miles that are EV miles. It's now 9% of miles driven on the Uber network in California are now EVs, which is a pretty extraordinary number. It's really second only to London, that's at 15%. So we feel like we're making the right investments. We are, for example, lowering our own booking fee and making sure that drivers can make more on a trip basis uh, when they move over to EVs. Uh, and in partnership, with both public and private, we think California is headed in the right direction, which is why you know we've stayed out of Prop 30 one way or the other. The economy, on the other hand, may be headed in the wrong direction. Bloomberg data showing that a recession is very likely. How concerned are you? How are you thinking about costs and spending? I mean, you do have, I, I believe, double the free cash flow that at Meta reported this quarter. Will you be opportunistic and look for uh, potential M&A opportunities out there despite everything that's going on more broadly. Yeah, I think this is one of the most uncertain environments I've been a part of. You know, we it's very difficult to tell where things are going to wind up. I think Europe is certainly going to be uh weaker and is likely headed into a recession. We're preparing for that. In the US it's unclear. A recession might happen, it might be a soft landing, etc. So I think from our standpoint, we want to be prepared for any eventuality. Uh, when you look at our marketplace, we are a marketplace business, so we don't have significant fixed costs. Uh, in a weaker labor environment, our supply position will tend to get better. Uh, we will be a place where more drivers can come to uh, earn real money on. This last quarter, for example, uh, 
earners earn more than $10 billion on our platform, up over 25%. So we do think that our marketplace gets more attractive to drivers. As it gets more attractive to drivers, prices come down, and that in turn attracts riders as well. Uh, so we think the business model is a good model that can you know, do well in uh, in strong economies and can perform in weaker economies. And I think as a company and as a technology company, we have been relatively forward thinking in making sure that we prepare ourselves for an uncertain world, making sure we're conservative in terms of the investments that we're making and an investment isn't paying off, pull back, put your money where the growth is. And I think it's showing in the results in terms of top line and free cash flow generation. And when our outlook, even in an uncertain environment, is a super strong outlook and we want to keep it that way.